in fresh acts of state terrorism. Indian troops have martyred 12 more youth in occupied Kashmir. This comes after India sent another 38,000 troops to the occupied valley over the past one week. The unarmed civilians have been martyred by Indian forces in Kupwara, Shopaya and Baramula districts. Pakistan has expressed serious concern over the escalating situation in the occupied valley. Meanwhile, United Kingdom, Germany and Australia have issued a travel advisory to their citizens against travelling to occupied Kashmir. India's BJP government has proposed major steps to unilaterally end the UN-recognized special status of Kashmir as a disputed territory. Kashmiri leaders have called on to the international community to take emergent action. If any order violating our and Kashmiri's rights is passed on August 6th, then from that day and that moment on, public agitation will prevail in Jammu and Kashmir. Every Kashmiri will step out of their home, putting their business and life at stake. But we will make sure that all efforts to change Jammu and Kashmir's special status through Parliament or Supreme Court fail. Now we have with us Sardar Masood Khan, President of Azad Jammu and Kashmir. Thank you for being with us. So how does the government of Azad Kashmir view India's increase in troops in occupied Kashmir and the escalation on the line of control? Well, the people in, in occupied Kashmir are uh, terrorized uh, and we are alarmed on the side because uh, of the constant hostile fire by Indian troops across the LOC, which has resulted in many deaths and injuries and destruction of houses and property and livestock and crops. So uh, we believe that India has gone berserk and it is deliberately creating uh, a war psychosis um, uh, in the Indian occupied Kashmir and also in the whole of India and the region. And this follows the offer of mediation made by President Donald Trump some time ago, uh, and which he, which he repeated um, recently. So we think that uh, uh, India, instead of saying yes to diplomacy, yes to political means, it has once again decided to resort to military means to brutalization of the Kashmiris and uh, to um, these coercive measures, which haven't worked for the past 72 years and they are not going to work this time too right so so what do you believe is the cause of these actions by new delhi there are many causes one is the rejection of diplomacy whether it is uh, international multilateral diplomacy or third party mediation or bilateral diplomacy or uh, trilateral talks between Pakistan, India and the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Second, India, uh, its ruling party, Bharatiya Janata Party, during the election campaign had promised that it would alter the demography of the uh, Indian occupied territory by rescinding Article 35A, which recognizes special privileges of the Kashmiris, like their permanent residence, employment, scholarships, acquisition of property. So <clears throat> probably they are following up on that commitment. There are also rumors that uh, they are trying to trifurcate Kashmir and they want to declare Jammu as a separate province and take Ladakh into the center's direct control. Uh, there is also a possibility that um, they want to prepare the ground for relimitation or delimitation of the constituencies in order to reduce the Muslim majority into minority in the areas where they have majority. So there are multiple purposes, but uh, the most sinister plan would be to uh, transfer populations and deport people out of Kashmir or to uh, manage and uh, inflow or influx of uh, non-Kashmiris from India, from Punjab, from Bihar, from Bengal, from Rajasthan, um, <clears throat> under different pretexts. So as you can see, there are multiple reasons, but right now, the existing, existential threat to Pakistan and the Kashmiris is that uh, India has chosen the path of warmongering, and it has 
instilled fear all around in the region and internationally. And what they want to do is uh, to, to, to make the situation volatile. Therefore, Pakistan should be fully prepared militarily. And Pakistan's nation should uh, respond effectively. Kashmiris should also brace for this eventuality because uh, India from time to time uh, commits aggression against Pakistan and at times it starts off these false flag operations which it calls terrorism and then accuses Pakistan for being behind them. So all possibilities are there but uh, we should take a firm stand and at the same time we should enlist the support of the international community which means the support of the United Nations Security Council, United Nations Secretary General, permanent members of the Security Council and uh, in this regard the Foreign Minister of Pakistan has reached out to the United Nations Security Council. I think that the Foreign Office here in the capital Islamabad has also briefed the permanent five members. So we need a very strong, robust diplomatic offensive to counter India's moves. Rightly said, sir. Coming to you lastly, India dropped cluster bombs yesterday along the civilian population areas along the line of control in violation of the Geneva Convention, sir. A word on that too. This is an egregious violation of the International Convention on Cluster Munitions of the Geneva Conventions and uh, international humanitarian law. And uh, we have condemned it. We have drawn the attention of the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, to, to, to take cognizance of the situation. Um, the other steps that it is taking, for instance, uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, changes in the demographic composition of the occupied territory, they also violate the Fourth Geneva Convention, its additional protocol one. Uh, then it, uh, the statute of the International Criminal Court and several resolutions of the United Nations Security Council and General Assembly. So <clears throat> in, India is uh, uh, violating international law and international human, human rights law flagrantly. Right, Siddharma Sudhkan, President Azad Jammu and Kashmir, thanks for joining us live on Indus News.